Welcome back again today. During the era of the Roman Republic and Empire, Numidia constituted a region in North Africa above the Sahara Desert. This kingdom would approximately align with present-day Western Tunisia and Eastern Algeria. Its earliest occupants were organized into tribes and clans, closely resembling other indigenous peoples of early North Africa. This tribe known as the Berbers is very diverse. The Berbers come from very light skin all the way up to very dark skin. It just depends on what part of North Africa you're from. Though there was European and Arab colonization and conquering of parts of North Africa, the Berbers have little recent admixture with Arabs and Europeans. We also must realize that Africa is the most diverse continent in the world, so if you go different places, skin color doesn't mean the same thing as it does in the West. Two clans within the Berbers would come to rise up in the Numidia Kingdom. As the Roman Empire waned, they were commonly identified as the Berbers. Starting around the 6th century BCE, or 2600 years ago, coastal areas were settled by Carthaginians who eventually expanded inland to modern day Tabisa by the 3rd century BCE. Numidian cavalry became integral to Carthaginian military forces during this period. Until the reign of Massinissa, leader of the Massili tribe near Serta, or modern-day Constantine, the Numidians led a semi-nomadic lifestyle and existence. The king would go on to unite the tribes and would lead the kingdom to prosperous times. With the expansion of the kingdom, threats would arise from Europe. Massinissa initially allied with Carthage during the Second Punic War, but later switched sides to Rome in 206 BCE. For this switch, he would receive additional territory. He played a crucial role in defeating rival Numidian chief, Syphax, and his Carthaginian allies at the Battle of Bagrades in 203 BCE. Massinissa's desire to wed Sophonispa, daughter of the Carthaginian commander Hasdrubal, led to tragic events, including her poisoning herself to avoid Roman captivity. Numidia's expertise in horsemanship, animal breeding, and cavalry tactics significantly influenced Roman military strategies. This was noted by Polybius, and after Massinissa's death in 148 BCE, Rome divided his kingdom among various chiefdoms. This would go on to continue the Numidia civilization. However, instability arose with the rise of Jugurtha in 118 BCE. This would ultimately lead to the renewed Roman control in 105 BCE. Jugurtha would be very ambitious and the ambition would bring him into contact with Rome. He would go on to have some Roman citizens killed and this would lead to the Jugurthian War. Rome would eventually take over the kingdom and would be split between the royal family. After the Roman Civil War, the Romans would consolidate the kingdom into the Roman Providence of Africa. Subsequent attempts by Numidians to establish independent states, such as Juba I's efforts, were ended by Julius Caesar at Thapsus. Juba would take his own life, and his son, Juba II, would be took and raised back in Rome. He would then be sent to rule the kingdom of Client in Martania. This would be the former part of the Numidi kingdom. Rome would then go on to reorganize the region into provinces, culminating in Numidi's formal establishment 
by Septimus Severus. The Roman presence, marked by the 3rd Legion stationed at Thambasis, facilitated population growth and economic prosperity during the first two centuries CE. In the 3rd century CE, Christianity spread rapidly, Latin became the main language, and Roman practices and architecture were implemented. The Berber culture didn't die completely and stayed, and stayed alongside the Roman culture. By the 4th century, Numidia emerged as the epicenter of the Donatist movement, appealing to the peasantry amid worsening social conditions. Following the Vendel conquests in 429 CE, Roman influences declined swiftly, allowing native cultures to persist beyond the Arab conquests in the 700s. These native cultures would endure until modern times. We have to realize that great kingdoms rise and fall, and their legacies eventually fade into history. Please like and subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you get all my videos. And when you click the bell notification, make sure you click the top one so you get all my videos. Add me on all social medias, which is Africa Network. And until next time, peace, one love.